Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned to another production of Revelation in Focus. From this point onwards, it's going to get very, very in more interesting and perhaps even rocky as we look at the very last events unfolding on planet Earth as is penned in the apocalypse. Last discourse, we would have uh, completed the uh, under the topic Christ the Conqueror. Uh, that when he comes the second time a number of things will happen that the righteous is caught up with him that the righteous dead is resurrected etc now when Christ leaves with the saved what happens after what does the apocalypse uh, allude to what does the apocalypse uh, record what is recorded in the apocalypse concerning the state of the earth and the state of things after Christ leaves. Uh, with how long he leaves, uh, he's going to be away for and with whom. We know the righteous dead and the righteous living are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. All right. And so to take us through uh, this uh, aspect of the discourse, we want to go to Revelation 20. And we want to cover from verse 1 to 5, all right? Verse 1 to 5. But just before we get into the reading of the word, I'm going to ask Elder Mentor to lead us to the throne of grace. We'll be here to minister unto hearts and minds. Use us, speak clearly, speak soundly. In Yeshua's name. Elder Chichester, I'm going to ask that you take us through Revelation 21 to 5. And it reads, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, and the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the trap, that old serpent which is the devil and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottom of the pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed and deceived. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, this is quite a lot, but we want to go through it and we want to be able to unearth what truths that the apocalypse, uh, apocalypse penned here. Uh, the angel having key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. What is this all about? And what is the significance? Now, to begin with, since we're talking about angel with, uh, with this great authority and power, this angel having the key. Now, let's, let's talk a bit about this angel. Well, there's a school of thought that suggests that uh, they are ranking, uh, an order of ranking concerning the, the, the heavenly bodies and that this perhaps refer to, refers to uh, a special elite army that God has, mercenaries as it will, that are, they, they are waiting on his commission to execute his wrath, his justice. Perhaps this is the case. We have a mention of that in the Bible um, in uh, Ezekiel 28 uh, verses, uh, verse 7 to 8, 
and it's re they refer to here as the terrible of the nations. All right, Isaiah 13 to the 6 refer to them as nobles. But whatever they refer to, the fact of the matter is this angel perhaps is uh, one of the, the special elite army that God has waiting at his command. But understand ultimately what this says, that, and for, this is important to note, regardless of how evil prevails and seem to go unchecked, uh, folk even now who do what they want to do and seem to get away with it, understand that ultimately the judge of the earth is in charge. All right? And so this angel has full authority. He has the key to hold a hold of the dragon, something that the dragon perhaps uh, was, was believed to have had before as called as, as the prince of the earth. But now it's in the hand of this angel. Understand what, what is happening here. All right? Now we want to talk about another bit of imagery, the bottomless pit. What is this referring to? Uh, where, where, where's the apocalypse going with this? Elder Mentor, I'm coming straight to you. Yes, um, first let me say the bottomless pit is not a pit. <laughs> All right. In desolation and ruin, you know, like, like a, a derelict mansion on a sprawling piece of land, but no one occupies it. You know, it's, 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 it's not populated, it's not inhabited, you know, or like a vast deserted place, a once thriving place, now abandoned you know or like a vast wilderness with few people living in it you know but in but in it, only thing in this stage is is like nobody living there it can be compared to the earth in its infancy at the beginning when god was creating in genesis 1 2 we read that the earth was void and without form and and darkness was on the face of the deep right but we also can find some reference to this bottomlessness and this abandonment that will happen um, and this earth being in ruins in Isaiah 24 1 it reads behold the Lord make it the earth empty and make it waste and turn it upside down and scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof all right so here it comes around this whole concept of the earth being void and being empty right also in uh, Jeremiah we find in verse 20, from verse 23 we find and I beheld the earth and lo it was without form and void in the heavens and they had no light I beheld the mountains and lo they trembled and all the hills move lightly hear this part I beheld and lo there was no man and all the birds of the heavens were fled and hear this now and I beheld and lo the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. So this is the Lord, the world, the earth in chaos, abandoned, broken up, the, the desolate. The has the right. It, it's his creation. <laughs> it's his creation, <laughs> you know. Uh, we want to move on um, and, and, and we, we, we go further in, into what the apocalypse is revealing here. Uh, the, the, what, what, why, why is the earth in this, this state? What's, what's responsible? Elder Ron, we, we, we come to you on this one. Right. Tell so our if viewers. you are following or this program, I should say, uh, you would remember that Desolation and ruin. All right, that's the state in which the, that's the aftermath of, of the seven last place. Yeah. And then we, we we must understand too, as we read, that the wicked, um, the unrighteous, will be slain. Those who are alive 
when Christ appears, they will be slain by the brightness of his coming. And we can, we can see that in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8. Now, while that's happening, while that has happened to the, to the unrighteous, the righteous dead will be resurrected. And the righteous living will be caught. The earth has started to be depopulated now. And the, those who are unsaved, who are in their graves, when Christ put in his appearance, will remain there until the second resurrection, that is, after the thousand years have been completed. And so we see all of Now we move on. Um, what is meant by this chain in the angel's hand that he is able to confine this so-called pomp and, and, and powerful prince of the earth? Now he's reduced, he's in chains, he, he's, he's imprisoned. This, this menace of the universe, the, the, the father of lies, the originator of sin himself, is, is now in prison. What, what is the apocalypse referring to? Well, uh, the, 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 the fact that nobody's there to tempt, and this puts a nail in the coffin of the lie that you don't die, and that, and that uh, he, the devil, has the power to bring back people from the dead. Well, let him resurrect the wicked. He's alone on the earth to, to, to a thousand years to contemplate the misery and the ruin he has caused this, this universe and the pain he has caused to humanity and the heart of God. Um, in addition to that, the fact that he's confined to earth, listen, he can't go anywhere. He can't go on a space rocket to the moon. He's here. This is where he's going to be. The power and might of God subdue him here. He, he has to remain here can't go anywhere else all right and uh, so so he has nobody to tempt nobody to deceive and then on top of that a thousand years folk a thousand years in darkness and misery that's what awaits him yeah that's what awaits him all the show off he's doing here jail waiting on him that is his jail you understand and so that is what the apocalypse refers to now Further to all of this, the same vagabond, the, 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 this guy, the, the menace, is given some other names, specific names, by the apocalypse. And we want to examine those names. Elder Mentor, we're coming to you. That were given to him, he was referred to as the dragon and the old serpent and Satan and the devil. You know, all means this one dirty, lawless, liar fellow. Right, and um, not only in this verse, in verse 2 of Revelation 20, he see before to these names, but they have several other places in the Bible that refers to him by these names. For example, in chapter 12 of Revelation, we find many references to him in the name dragon. All right, um, in verse 3, he's referred to as the red dragon, in verse 9, he's referred to as the great dragon, but there are other places we have referred to directly as the dragon is verse 7, verse 13, and verse 17 referred to him as a dragon. I read verse 17, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of the seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Christ. All right, so this we refer to as the dragon directly. He's also referred to as the, as the old serpent, you know, because I guess it... it in the Genesis, he was before it was a serpent because it was just there, and that's the nature he took on. But now he's been for six thousand years creating problem. He get old, he turn a old serpent, you know. So, right. So in Genesis three one, we find where the serpent tempted Eve, and the Apostle Paul talk about um, in Second Corinthians eleven three, where he was telling the brethren he's he, he's apprehensive that the old serpent mm -hmm. might be able to gain the upper hand over them you know and so he was apprehensive right in same revelation 12 in which they mention him as the dragon they refer to him as the serpent too now um now um 
we did allude to it before, and we're going to go into a little more discourse on it. Uh, how long will he be bound for? Uh, a school of thought uh, coins it this way. You have the pre-advent judgment, that is, the judgment that determines who's lost and saved. People who are judged based on what is written in the book. Those names that are still in the book of life are deleted. That's the pre-advent judgment. Christ is not coming to determine lost and saved. That's being done now. But after the saved, the resurrected living, uh, righteous, and those who are alive, who are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, what are they doing with him for this time? Uh, where are they? And how is this relating to the dragon in terms of how long he's going to be in his prison? Hello, if you please, the prison. All right, Elder, Elder Ron, we come to you. And years, a thousand years is a long time. Yeah. All right. So, if, um, when it's a literal thousand, we know it's a long time, okay, for the devil to be bound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we know it's, it's a long time when we compare that with what is said in verse 3. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, the ending part says, and after that, he, Satan, must be loosed a little season. So if you compare little season with a thousand years, thousand years is a very long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, of course. Uh, so where will the saved be? We, 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 we want to go to that other part of the discourse. Where will the saved be? Now, the, the, the resurrected righteous and the living righteous are caught up to meet the Lord in the earth. Where are they going and what they are going to be doing? for a thousand years. Elemental. Yes, well, they'll be where, God's, where God dwells. And John sees them in the future sitting on thrones because, um, oh, you know, Hallelujah. verse, verse no, no, 4 talks about, that again. You know, they're sitting on thrones in yeah. heaven, you know, Hallelujah. and they're sitting as, 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 as priests and, 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 and kings and, you know, Glory. kingly authority, you know, oh, yeah. and judging, looking over the judgment of God you know, and making sure that, you know, that everything is, is, is okay. So it, it, there's a great day coming for, for those of us who miss out on the here. You know, we have the hereafter. You know, also um, Christ has promised his disciples, his 12 apostles, in Matthew 19, 28, because they were discussing the whole issue about, you know, forsaking everything and following him. And Christ told them, he said, look, don't worry yourself, but you lose out in this life. I'm going to give you 12 thrones oh, to Lord sit Lord and Lord. judge oh, the 12 Lord. tribes of Israel. Glory. So, so don't, 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 don't worry with here. I'm giving you something better, way better, out of your wildest dreams. And the Apostle Paul also made reference to it too in um, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3 when he was talking to the saints at Corinth because they had a little matter and you know they couldn't seem to be able to make judgment between themselves Lord. as brethren but they went to the ungodly for judgment and he was saying yo hold up boy don't you know we would be judging the world don't you know the saints will be judging angels we be looking into the affairs of angels so why can't we judge simple matters between ourselves you know so the apostle Paul was making reference to the fact that you know, God's people will be part of God's judgment process. And so that is what we will we, be in heaven, helping God in, you know, mean, and overseeing the judgment glory scenario, God, you know. Glory to God. Now, now for, for, this is time to get excited. This is, this is the time to get excited. Yes. yes. You know, hold on. The deprivations, the wrath of the beast, the wrath of the dragon. The, 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 the scorn of Babylon, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the economic exploitation right. and, 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 and suppression of, of the Babylonian system. Folk, God is, pre is, 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 is paying back his people. Yes. Uh, uh, the, 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 the prophecies speak to this. Let not your heart be troubled. Understand? Uh, he believe in God, believe also in me. Now, now hold on. Hold on. There's more in this. I get excited here. Because the word of God, I take this literally. Joint hears with Christ and hears with God. Yep. This is literal. This is this is this man. I have I have heard it said by by a, a famous social commentator. In serving the Lord, the wages are sometimes low, but the retirement benefits are out of this world. Understand 
that the promises here that we see on thrones of the saved is unlike anything. The word of God says it has not entered into the imagination of man. So even though the apocalypse is talking about all these great things about to happen that are promised to the people of God, the apocalypse is saying that he still hasn't, he still don't get it. <laughs> he cannot wrap his mind, his finite mind around the eternal glories that, that for 10,000 years and you've only just begun. Understand what we're talking about? Eternal vigor and youth, all right? And partakers of the divine nature. This is not spiritual with character, no. This is divine being. Hello, somebody. Because the Bible says that when Christ comes, we will be as he is. Hello. This is time to get excited, all right? And so the, 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 those who are participating in this judgment, hold on. There are going to be people who rejected you. All the sacrifices for the cause of Christ will be rewarded on that day. Uh, man, you will look outside that city. You, you will look into the books of records and find out why Tom Jones lost out. Mm -hmm. huh? Because remember the character of God is vindicated here. The world must know that God is just. And so the saved will go through. There will be surprises in heaven. There will be surprises in heaven because a lot of people who are walking around pious and you think they're going, they're not there. And a lot of people who people had written off, fallen from grace, are there. Understand? And so that's what the post-advent judgment is all about. And that is what is going on here. All right? That's what's going on here. And so we, 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 we are coming to a close now. All right, those who refuse to worship the beast, those who refuse to accept his mark, and those who have been marginalized and deprived, those who face the wrath of the dragon, are repaid here. So, what is this judgment all about, really? We want to close on this note. And so, Elder, run, take it, take it from here. All right, so, Satan, one of the accusations that Satan heard against God, is that he was unfair and unjust in his judgment, <laughs> right? In his dealings with, with human humanity and, and even the angels. Now, let us understand that God is as merciful as he is just. Amen. All right? Oh, yeah. All right? Oh, yeah. And um, these, two these two virtues are equally blended in him. Mm -hmm. All right? The Bible says mercy and justice. That's, 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 what's mm -hmm. with this that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? No. And so God is calling all of us mm -hmm. to repentance. Hallelujah. True. Amen. Because each of us will have to stand individually mm -hmm. before his judgment seat. Amen. Now God's love for us, let's understand this too, will not allow sin to go unchecked. Mm -hmm. True. And hence his judgment. So God is merciful, but there's a time when his justice must be meted out. Yes. Both his people and his character will be vindicated mm -hmm. in the judgment. And so the judgment spoken of in Revelation 20 and verse 4 is not to determine, as Elder Cleveland said earlier, who will be saved or who will be lost. Mm -hmm. That would have already been done. Mm -hmm. True. It is for the redeemed who will have been saved. Yes. To see that God was fair in his decision mm -hmm. regarding the unsaved. Mm -hmm. Yes. And to also see that Satan's accusations that God is unfair or unjust are unfounded. A yeah. bunch of lies. Right? Yep. The, the, exactly what he is. A liar from the start. Right. All right? Elements Before I suspect you want to throw something here, I can see the excitement in you. No, about <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, of course, because um, if the devil is also the accuser. Yes. And then like, he tried to tempt and entice people to do wrong. And, then, and when he done it wrong, and you know what I mean, accuse them before out. God and say, you know, I, I tell you, he couldn't stand up and he couldn't this. Like, you know, when God saw Job, he asked Satan about Job. He always with that, but God is going to vindicate his character and his people for trusting in him. Folk, the epitome of evil and wickedness is coming. Amen. The sentence has been pronounced, already pronounced. Hell has already been prepared for the devil and angels. Not for us. We go there if we choose, folk. We have a choice.
but it is not God's desire to destroy us. It's a strange act, the Bible says. God's a God of love. He wants to save all of us, but he cannot overpower our will. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That's what he says. And if any man hears, open the door of your heart and accept his salvation. If you do, don't be worried about where you're going through and where you have to go through. Heaven awaits. And so we close on this note. There is a heaven to gain, but watch this, a hell to shun. Yes, the devil has been conquered, but he's also conquered. If you don't watch out, you don't watch and pray, you don't hold by faith and the hand of God, he can conquer you. And his agenda is to steal and to kill and destroy, but God's agenda is to be saved. It's up to you. All right? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for your word. We pray that it will not return into you void, but we decree and declare that it will accomplish that which you sent it out to do. We pray these are our mercies in the name of Prince Emmanuel. Amen. Amen.